In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you some tips on using the voiceover room and taking the result of that voiceover and adding it to a music track in such a way that the two don't compete with one another. I have on track number one a very short slideshow, and then on track number four, I've placed my music track to go along with it. And if I play a little bit of it, you'll get a sense of what we're doing. These are, are basically shots that were taken in New York Harbor, Ellis Island, stuff like that. So you get to see the sense of where the slideshow is going. So what I want to do now, we're going to back up and go to the beginning. And I want to add a voiceover, which is not uncommon with a slideshow. So I'm going to click on the microphone on the left panel or I can press the F10 function key to get into my voiceover recording room. We'll do that, and we notice we have some options here. I can click on the device button, and if I have more than one microphone, I will see that and I can select. Here I only have one. We'll close out of that. You also have a profile button. This is where you can select the kilohertz that you're running with, and whether it's mono or stereo. For human voice, mono is always the best, but you can see you have lots of options here in this tool. So I'm going to close that one out as well. No changes. Then on preferences, you have some interesting ones. You can just control the duration of the recording by clicking on time limit and set hours, minutes, and seconds. You can auto fade in and out at the beginning and end. I tend not to do that with human voice, but I do click this one, add a three second delay before recording. I find that helpful. So I often will check that one on. I'll click on OK. And then we have another option about mute, muting all tracks when recording. I want to do that because if I listen to the music, it's not really going to help me in this case for the recording that I'm doing. So I'm going to click on mute all tracks. In addition, as I'm recording here, I want to make sure it doesn't get too noisy for you. So I'm going to temporarily also manually mute my music track. So let's press on the record button. And it asks me where I want to put it below track one. That would be fine in this case. I'll click on OK. And now it's going to count down. Three, two, one, zero. And now it will begin recording my voice. In this case, I would normally begin to narrate what the slides are, what the next slides are. They would be a little more slower in a normal sense, but this gives you a sense of how this would work in this situation. So we'll stop our recording before we've gone too far and see what we get. You notice it will lay that down. It will call it capture. It will give it the number starting at one. I've done this a few times, so we're already up to 16. So now I have my audio, but I'm going to have a problem. My problem is I've got two audio tracks, my voice and the music. And when we play them together, you're going to hear some conflict. Listen, and now it will begin recording my voice. In this case, I would normally begin to narrate what the slides are, what the next slides are. Now my problem is that my music is overriding the voice, and I don't want to do that. So what I can do is I can click on my music track, and then I can either click on the edit button or I can right click and click on edit audio. So let's go edit audio and I'm going to use audio ducking. And here I can set the sensitivity, the ducking level, a fade in or a fade out. Again, the first two sliders are the most important to me. How sensitive do I want this to be and how much do I want to crunch down the audio in the music track? I'll leave it about where these numbers are for now and click on OK. And now if we play this from the beginning, we're going to have a quite a different begin result. recording my voice. In this case, I would normally begin to narrate what the slides are, what the next slides are. They would be a little more slower in a normal sense, but this gives you a sense of how this would, be, this would work in this situation. So we'll stop our recording before we've gone too far. Now, as you heard, when the audio track ended, or if I were to pause in my voice, it goes back up again. Now, if you want to start all over again and set different parameters for audio ducking, you can right click on the music track and click on reset volume level. And it will take away all the audio keyframes and you can do the audio ducking again. Or if you really want to, you can do it manually by inserting those nodes or those indicators of keyframes in your audio track.
That's a beginning look at using the voiceover tool combined with audio ducking in CyberLink PowerDirector. Mm -hmm.